Hey, Meg Toes, this is Vention. <laughs> this is not a bad little hotel. Well, I just thought I'd uh, bring you guys up to date of, about the disaster, which is the Vention House. <laughs> um, boy, it is, a, it is a real mess. Um, the thing is, uh, my younger sister um, had a head injury when she was a kid, and she is like completely screwed as a result. And the thing is, um, oh, I got some mail from a, a remote mailbox because I, I, I can't count on her not stealing my mail. <laughs> But the thing is, uh, she's basically been sort of, sort of my secret shame for, for many years now. Um, am I zoomed in on this thing? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, and she's, she's incapable of caring for herself, supporting herself, and she's, and she's basically, she was homeless, right? And then. Uh, soft hearted vention, silly me. <laughs> I um, I offered her the back one of the rooms in my old house, and um, and she basically uh, she took it and everything, but uh, but and and she was given a f basically a free place to live for for. Um, you know, I think it was like seven, maybe eight years now, and but over that time, something really weird happened in her freaking hamster wheel brain, and that is, um, she became resentful of my superior ability to earn my f the f fuck. I have a head injury too. I got my skull smashed in, but uh, it wasn't as bad as. I mean, she didn't get a skull fracture, but she definitely had brain damage. Um, but she basically, um, she basically started feeling resentful of my, I guess, my superior abilities to earn and and my abilities to, you know, um, you know, see opportunities such as bitcoins and amongst other things, you know, and um, and. She, of course, is a pathetic piece of shit who doesn't have a friend in the world because has, she has such a shitty personality. Um, nobody in the world gives a shit about her now. And, and basically, uh, I was, I've been holding off as hard as I could, you know, but, but you know, she really needs to get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> um, and she... Um, and she, I don't know what the fuck she was thinking, but she just completely lost her mind um, when I was in Mexico. And and she went through my my room and stole practically everything. <laughs> it's bizarre, man. I mean, it's all chump change to me. Um, but but the viciousness and the vindictiveness of what she did, it's. Uh, it's, it was shocking and and caused me to feel a significant amount of grief, you know, like like somebody I knew, I thought I knew, had died. Because she's been a bitchy pain in the ass for years, but she has never really betrayed me the way she did just recently. Um, she stole uh, some silver, which is basically chump change, and she stole... Uh, and by the way, if you're a precious metals guy like me, uh, like I used to be, um, the thing is about precious metals, anybody who can grab them can walk away with them, right? And I was completely blindsided by this whole thing. I never, never thought in a million years she would actually go, my, go through my room and steal shit. It's bizarre. So, um... So she stole my silver, I don't know, maybe five or six thousand dollars worth. Uh, she stole uh, 
she stole my printer scanner and it's going to be a pain to do my taxes without that and um, and it's uh, and she went through and stole a couple of multimeters uh, but then she totally overlooked the vastly more valuable power tools because I have a nice array of uh, DeWalt power tools and uh, and um, and all their accessories and batteries and everything and and she just totally ignored all that because she's so clueless about tools. She even went through my room and stole my cancer meds, <laughs> and uh, and and I had some nice button-down shirts, you know, with the two pockets and sort of semi-flannel material, but not really the flannel design, and. Um, they were very nice and warm in the winter, and she stole those. What the fuck? She went through my uh, files and, a tri and apparently tried to attack my money uh, by stealing a bunch of old Bitcoin wallets that were on paper that I used to have before I got my Trezor. And, and the thing is, uh, and she stole my safe deposit box key, but now... All, and she stole the the uh, the uh, titles to my both of my trucks and my camper. And man, this is it's shit that she can't even use. But she is she was just so full. She still is. She's so full of rage and hatred against the entire world. And I just happen to be a handy target. Uh, because I am so much fucking better than her in every possible measurable way. Um, I guess it just got to her and and her resentments of my superiority just increased and increased and she like probably nursed her resentments just like Smeagol with the one ring, you know, my precious, my precious and uh, and just hating on me fuck, it's no wonder I couldn't get rid of the cancer with with her stupid ass in the house. All that anger and rage was just coming in on me. Um, and I, I guess I just wasn't even aware of it. I mean, I knew she was resentful, but I had no idea that it had escalated to the point of actual hatred. So, wow, man, it's like, just like a lot of married guys, you know? They get so blindsided, you know. They, the, uh, the rage and anger and betrayal just comes, seems to come out of nowhere, and then they just get totally, totally gobsmacked, totally stunned, and totally, you know, uh, shocked and uh, unable to function. And I can understand now how how that feels now. Um, I, I got a little bit more sympathy for all the married guys who've been totally hosed over by their wives. <laughs> I mean, it's, thank God I'm not married to uh, somebody like that. Jeez. Um, so anyway, um, she's uh, constantly over the years, I suspect she's been uh, reporting to Social Security that she's paying rent and yet she is not. She paid rent one month and I gave her a receipt for that one month but uh, then she did not after that so no more receipts. But anyway, um, so basically she's been filling her safe with freaking money uh, in cash which is being freaking inflated every single year and um, back er in the early days when she first moved in she was actually trying to be useful and reasonable, and uh, and she um, she did a few things like getting finding a really good bargain on a nice uh, coat, and a few other things that that I was actually happy to have, and uh, and and she was actually going to give them to me, but I said, hey, uh, what do you say I just pay you in Bitcoin? So I uh, created that was before Trezors existed. Or before I was aware of them, I'm not sure. So I uh, created some old-fashioned paper wallets for her. 
and just dumped the bitcoins in there and they were just they were worth about no oh, five hundred dollars each back then and now they're sixty thousand dollars each sheesh yeah amazing thing but anyway um so you know this has got to end i can't i can't be exiled from my own friggin house <laughs> but here i am i mean it's a nice hotel room you know i uh I, I, it's got a nice bed i checked it for bed bugs nice little deck um, if it was warmer, I could get some sun out there. Um, <laughs> and although I don't intend to use it, because who knows what kind of mung, grody, semen bullshit is in here, but it actually has a tub with uh, with jets that you could, like, turn on and, uh, and have, like, a whirlpool thing going. <laughs> but who knows what kind of freaking horrible... Uh, vaginal secretions I would be uh, bathing in if I did so <laughs> so I think I'll just opt out of that <laughs> thank you thank you very much so um, anyway um, so um, but back to this uh, so man that first day I was so shocked I was like well the first day I didn't even notice it right I was just happy to be home and and I saw that there was some of my clothes were missing in the closet. I figured dad just packed them into the storage room um, so that he could sort of use the space and that would have been fine. And in fact, he moved his refrigerator into there because he, he wants to keep his food separate from Joyce and I can well understand that. But, um, but basically, um, uh, it's, it's a situation where, um, you know, I didn't even notice. And that shows how attached to the, all the possessions that he, she stole. That shows how attached I am, which means not at all. <laughs> In fact, if she can use the, uh, the silver or the button down shirts or the printer to uh, restart some kind of life for herself, Fuck, I'm happy if she can manage it, you know. Um, so basically, I was in, I was in the stages of grief. You know, you have. Once I figured out that she had actually stole all that shit, that was, that was like, the next day or something like that. Um, um, I was in shock, you know, because man, it came out of nowhere. Uh, she has never been a thief before, but wow, she really. She really tried going full bore on the whole thief thing. And it wasn't just thieving, it was sabotage too. Because she attempted to uh, to steal my Bitcoins, which is a joke, because obviously I have them better secured than that. Um, and she, oddly enough, she even went into my camper, my truck camper, and stole the little single mattress that I put in there. Uh, for, I guess, I don't know why, for her, for her own use, maybe. It would be perfect size for like van life or whatever. And um, and then, and then like the next day, I was still like bumbling around in shock and grief for the loss of what I thought was a relationship that, that still had some kind of family thing attached to it, you know? And, um, but um, but apparently that has all that ship has sailed. <laughs> and her uh, she obviously doesn't give a shit about family or anybody else and or anyone else at all because she doesn't have a friend in the world. Um, every everyone who tries to be her friend ends up leaving because, She's got such a crappy personality. Um, so basically she has no one and she has just, the only thing she has is just what she stole and what she's accumulated through her social security fraud. And, um, and that's about it. And, and of course the Bitcoins. And, um, and I checked them the other day cause I have the hard copy, P not the hard copy, but the, uh, 
a PDF copy of the Bitcoin wallet in my encrypted database just in case she fucked it all up and lost them. Um, I don't have the passwords, but I could probably figure it out. Not that I want to, because it's just chunk change. Um, but she basically, um, but she basically has about one hundred and seven thousand dollars in there, which, which is kind of a significant amount of money. So basically, um, I ha I have to get rid of her. I have I got to get her out of the house. Either she leaves or I leave, right? I stopped payment on the rent, you know, the automatic payment for, you know, paying the rent so that when Inslee finally lifts his moratorium on evictions, they can immediate, I'll already be several months behind, and then they can immediately jump into the foreclosure um, phase of the uh, situation, and then, then we'll be out and then we'll be free of her, basically. But she's refusing to sign off on the on her removal from the lease. Uh, and she's giving excuses about she wants her shit and everything. And nobody wants to take her shit, <laughs> as, as I said to her before. So I'm stuck with a crazy bitch. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I was changing hotels from one way up then Olympia one, and now I moved, I moved south to Chehalis, right next to my traveling mailbox. It's like two blocks away. And because I had some Amazon packages delivered there, liposomal, vitamin C, and a few other things. And, um, and basically, uh, so I got my packages. And now I'm going to kick back here for two days until Monday. Monday, probably around noon, that's when I'm going to go back home. But I told Joyce that um, if she is not off the lease and vacated by Monday noon, um, I will uh, I will inform Social Security of her bitcoins um, and send the PDF copy of her bitcoins to their Social Security fraud department. I'll have to do some research on that and then uh, report her Social Security fraud. And then she will lose her benefits. And what a fucking disaster that would be for her. Uh, but man, she's been a disaster for me and dad for seven years now. So it is time that we should be furry of her, basically. So, um, and man, when I came back from Mexico, oh, let me step back a little bit. You know uh, the experiments that scientists and people do uh, um, with plants where, or grain or whatever, uh, where they, uh, where they, uh, um, they, they focus bad thoughts on one plant and then good thoughts on another plant and they like label the plants good or bad and then the, with the same growing conditions the hated plant just grows like half the size of the uh, the plant which is not given hate right and then the control group is like halfway in the middle um, so basically what I was dealing with all this time I mean by the way this works with people too um, it's kind of woo woo and it's out there but but it thoughts are real things and they are real forces and they have real effects on the real world and they affect real people uh, and it is uh, important to be aware of that sort of thing but man it, with all that hate and rage and anger that she was dumping all over me for the last year few years it is no surprise at all that I couldn't shake off the cancer um, it, if even if she um, even if that's not the only factor it's like one of many and it's an it's a hindrance which I'm lay which I've been laboring under and um, and basically I've been uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it made the difference between my living or dying um, from the cancer 
So anyway, the moment when I came back from Mexico, uh, man, within about three days, my liver started really hurting and it started getting really bad um, to the point where I could barely even breathe. And, um, and it's, and I take MSM and uh, ibuprofen and a few things that make it a lot better. But, um, man, I had to get out of that house. So I, I did, I got a hotel. <laughs> The old, the crazy old bitch drove me out of my own fucking house and here I am in a hotel and um, so anyway, um, so anyway I, I dropped my, I swung by the house, issued the ultimatum, Monday at noon or she loses her social security disability benefits. And uh, then I came south to uh, this hotel and uh, now I'm going to concentrate on relaxing and and um, trying to gain a little sanity back. And over the last two days, I've been doing some heavy fasting, and fasting really helps with this problem. Every time I get a little bit of discomfort in my liver, um, almost certainly from the cancer, I do a two-day fast, and I'm back back okay again. So uh, basically, I'm going to hit it hard. Um, for I'm not sure how long, quite a while. Um, this is a sort of a death match between me and the cancer now. Uh, I tried taking my medications without eating anything yesterday, and man, that was a dismal failure. I barfed them all up into the toilet. Um, so this morning, um, the hotel uh, that I stayed in, the Quality Inn, I think, in Olympia, they um, they provided this abbreviated little breakfast with sausage biscuits and whatnot, so I I took it and I had the I pulled the egg and the sausage out, and I took those with my med meds and man I've been fine all day I haven't been able I haven't had the slightest well maybe the very tiniest bit of nausea, um, but basically, so what I'm going to be doing going forward is sort of a intermittent fast, but it's going to be really, really Spartan. I'm going to take like maybe one or two eggs in the morning with all my meds, and then uh, maybe some green tea with butter with uh, my afternoon meds, and then maybe, maybe I can salvage something from this situation. And if Joyce doesn't leave, I'll report her for the fraud, and then I will probably flee back to Mexico and uh, abandon the house and everything. And um, the only thing I need to do is get rid of my guns. Um, I'm going to have, I know a friend of mine up north who might want to buy them. I don't even need any money from them, <laughs> but I do need the title to the guns transferred legally so that I will no longer uh, be under that legal vulnerability. Because if somebody steals it, for example, if I have my truck camper in storage somewhere, somebody steals it, gun it, gun crime is committed with my gun, could be a problem for me legally, assuming I live that long. <laughs> okay, MGTOWs, that is the uh, horrible... Um, the horrible, uh, hideous, freaking story of Vengeance's stupid-ass, retarded sister. <laughs> and all of the shit that she has caused me. And all the wealth that she's drained and the well-being that she's drained from me over the years. So all I can say going forward, I mean, I was all, I was all MGTOW and everything. But it never occurred to me that that would apply to my sister, right? Um, but sure as shit, it does. Every not nearly as bad as a wife, but but it a sister can cause you enormous problems too. Um, and I would recommend to any MGTOW out there or any man out there that if you have a fucked up, screwed up sister who's homeless 
and she's moaning and looking pathetic and sitting in the rain and and yowling her agony to the universe and and moaning for uh, for you to help her for God's sakes don't let her into your house um, the if you do the only thing she's gonna bring you is trouble and pain she's homeless for a reason just let her and it's almost certainly self-inflicted and just let her deal with her karma and deal with her destiny as she has chosen to deal with it and don't interfere uh, just like uh, the non-interference rule in Starfleet um, the the non-interference rule is there to protect us not to protect the civilization right that you're going to be uh, interfering with you've got you've got to stay out of her life you've got to keep your distance and and basically get, keep a keep a firewall of separation between you and her um, and the more fucked up she is the more important that firewall is I mean if you got a decent sister who's self-supporting and reasonable there's no reason why you can't enjoy her company and have barbecues and shit you know and like like normal people sometimes do but uh, for God's sakes if you are uh, if she's screwed up you have got to uh, you have got to keep her away from you otherwise she will bring nothing but disaster to your life so yeah I mean it's a hard lesson and it took me seven years to learn it but I know it now um, if she's not out of there, you know, I've got to, I'm, I'll probably head for Mexico. Maybe I'll have time to rescue dad and get him out of there. But he is also given in to despair because of her. And um, he's been off the wagon. He was an alcoholic like 30 years ago. Um, and he's apparently given in to despair and now he's drinking again so um, I don't know he might be in a death spiral of his own um, perhaps I can do something to save him but man I have got to save myself too because if I don't uh, handle this liver problem this liver cancer problem I mean I got cancer elsewhere but the liver cancer is really causing me pain um, if I don't handle that soon, um, and if it gets significant, if it gets a little bit worse, not a little bit, a bit worse, measurably worse than it is now, um, I will probably have to do something that I will not say on YouTube. So, um, but I'm going to solve my problem uh, in the most logical way available. So um, you can probably tell my voice is a bit breathy and wheezy and weak. And it's because the, um, the liver tumors, I suspect, are growing into things that should be able to move in relationship to the liver. But now they are moving into it and sort of fusing the liver to the diaphragm and various other things. And that is causing pain when I breathe. So, um, so that's where the breathy, weak ass voice is coming from. So I'm going to do some hardcore fasting with just a little bit of something in the morning to keep me from barfing my meds up. And if I have the house available to me and meaning Joyce is gone, I might have a chance of hitting it hard for a week and seeing how I feel after the week is over. See if I can knock the cancer down enough to the when I can, so that I can breathe. And if I can do that, then I can get dad a senior apartment condo or something somewhere. And um, then get him out of the house and uh, get rid of that house. Um, and then um, probably after that, I'll probably head back to Mexico after I've loaded up on all my meds and um, 
and colostomy supplies, and then uh, kick back in Guadalajara where I don't have any friggin' stress. Um, but man, the stress that has been dumped on me over the last week since I've come back has been legendary. I've, I haven't experienced stress like that since basic fucking training in the army. So, so, uh, so basically, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fucked up situation. And the le lesson that I can share with all of my MGTOW brothers and every man who's watching this is for God's sakes, if you have a homeless sister, don't give her shelter. You can do anything else you want for her. You can give her money, help her get a place. But for God's sakes, don't allow her into your home or she will just bring you nothing but trouble and grief. Um, you know, after the you know, the brief period while she's trying to be a decent human being, she will give you absolutely nothing but pain. So don't, don't do it. And also, don't get married. <laughs>